do you see when you look in the mirror? Your best silly face? The school picture day smile? That look you get when mom tells you to get out of bed for school? <laughs> Whatever you may see in the mirror, something amazing is true. You are a mirror. God made you in his very own image to reflect who he is to the world around you. That's right. When people look at you, they can see a little piece of what God is like. Not the way your mouth is shaped or the color of your eyes, but when you choose to encourage someone, hey, great job today. Others can see God's kindness. When you paint a picture, they catch a glimpse of a God who imagined the whole world. When you help your friend solve an argument, they can see a reflection of the God who made peace with us. The God who thought up the entire universe made you to look like Him. And when you use your imagination, you can show the whole world a little piece of what He's like. That's why creativity is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. My name is Jacob and today I want to talk to you about creativity because there's so many different ways to be creative, right? You could be like a creative actor. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him well. Who's Yorick? You got the wrong skull, kid. Oh. You could be a creative dresser. <clears throat> Hey! You could be like a creative, I don't know, scientist? <laughs> but most of the time when you hear the word creativity, you think of something like this. A work of art. Or maybe you think of something like this. Wonder what's got him so anxious. 
Ugh, ewy. In today's story, you're going to hear about the very best creation of all time. Actually, it's the very first creation of all time. It's where creativity was born. And cockroaches. Uh, no, it's good. It's, uh, it's indescribable. See you in a few. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Genesis. Chapters 1 and 2. In the beginning. The very beginning. Before the first breath. Before the first flash of color. Before the first moment in time. There was... Nothing. Nothing. Nothing except God. But when God saw nothing, he saw a blank canvas. He saw the perfect backdrop for a work of art beyond imagination. So, God created. From absolutely nothing, He brought forth the heavens and the earth. But there was no shape or form. God's Spirit hovered over the dark emptiness. Then, God called out, Let there be light. Brilliant light shattered the darkness like golden trumpets on a still morning. Bright rays shimmered and danced in all the hues of the rainbow. God saw the light was good. He divided the light from the dark, calling the light day and the darkness night. Evening and morning together shaped the very first day of all time. Then God said, Let there be a huge space between the waters. Let it separate water from water. By his words alone, God shifted the waters, leaving a vast arching space above the sky. Evening and morning rolled past. The second day, God lifted his voice again. Let the water under the sky be gathered into one place. Let ground appear. Dry land shrugged its way out of the water. Islands and vast continents and gritty deserts and towering mountains. God called the dry ground land and he called all the gathered waters seas. But God had even bigger plans for this day. Let the land produce plants and let there be trees on the land. In moments, tall grasses unfurled across the plains and giant redwoods shot up from the dirt. Flowers and grapevines and carrots and corn sprouted and flourished. God saw that all of it was good. That evening and morning closed out the third day. Let there be lights in the huge space of the sky. Let them separate the day from the night. At the sound of God's voice, the blazing sun exploded into being. The silvery moon spun out. Stars and galaxies flooded into space, filling the universe. Pew, pew, pew. God set the sun to rule the day and the moon to rule the night. And God saw it was good. That evening and morning made up the fourth day. But God wasn't done painting his masterpiece just yet. Let the seas be filled with living things. Let birds fly above the earth and across the huge space of the sky. Instantly, the seas and rivers and ponds writhed with dolphins and octopi, salmon and minnows. Eagles soared and bluebirds nested while ostriches stretched their long necks. God saw they were good. That evening and morning formed the fifth day. But God kept working on his creation. Let there be livestock and creatures that move along the ground and wild animals. At once, animals of every kind appeared. Elephants thundered through the forests and squirrels darted up tree trunks. Monkeys chattered and pigs rolled happily in the mud. God saw it was all good. But 
he had one more creation in mind. Let us make human beings so that they are like us. Let them rule over the fish and the birds. Let them rule over all the animals. Then, with his own hands, God formed the very first man and the very first woman, Adam and Eve. I, I'm me. And you are you. And this place, it's beyond words. Unlike the animals, God made people in his image to reflect him. Have children and fill the earth. Rule over the fish and the birds and every living creature. I am giving you every plant on the earth for food. God looked over everything he had created and saw that it was very good. That evening and morning were the sixth day. And on the seventh day, God rested. <laughs> I mean, his work was finished. His glorious creation was complete. But because God had formed people in his image, they too could reflect his imagination and creativity. The possibilities ahead of them were endless. Okay. I just thought of another way to describe creativity. Creativity is imagining what you could do because you were made in God's image. I mean, God created everything, right? He made the stars and the planets and the mountains and the oceans. He made dogs and cats and elephants and ostriches. But when he made us, it got personal. God made us so that we think and feel and act a tiny bit like him. We are made in his image. So check it. Imagine looking at yourself in a mirror. That's what God is like. And no, I'm not saying that he has the same hairstyle or eye color, but look a little bit closer. There's imagination behind your eyes. You have a smile that could encourage someone when they're feeling down. And your hands that could help someone lift a heavy load. Ugh. All right. Ooh. There's no limit to what God can do through you. That's because there's no limit to God's creativity. That's the one thing to remember today. There's no limit to God's creativity. Seriously, take a look this week at the things God has made and let it blow your mind. Look at the stars in the sky and think about how it could take literally millions of years just to visit one up close. Listen to the sounds outside your window at night and let yourself wonder, how do crickets make that noise anyway? And then look really close in the mirror and see how unique you are. See the color and feel the texture of your skin. Look deep in the reflection of your eyes to see a God that made you and loves you more than you could even imagine. That should give us all a lot to think about. No wonder this guy's a statue. He's thinking about God's creativity. Dude.